Welcome to the ShareWalls online tutorial videos. This series of videos will go through different sections of the go to table inside the design results. This first video will explain the project information and structural data sections. Note that details of each table and columns described throughout this series of videos are also provided in the legend located under the tables in question. In this five part series of videos, we will help you understand various parts of the design results from Shearwalls based on a simple rectangular one story project file with a hip proof. I have already drawn my structure and generated loads, and I will now run the design. The project file available in the description below is saved until this point. You will notice that even for this one story project file, there are around 40 pages of design results. Instead of scrolling through the various pages of the design results generated, the go-to table is a tool to quickly jump to relevant information about the design such as loads, design summary, and wind and seismic design analysis. Throughout this video, we will be going through the various areas of the design results using the go-to table button. The first thing you should do after running the project is to look at the design summary table. This table will alert you of major issues and will point you to the relevant tables to address those issues. However, for this training, we will work our way down the list of results tables. The project information section includes company and project information and is directly related to what is filled in the settings company information and project description tabs. The next area, design settings, provides a summary of all the selected design settings, such as the wind load generation method and the shear line distribution type. The site information includes a summary of the input used to determine wind and seismic loads for the project file. The next menu item is the structural data. The story information as well as block and roof information gives you a summary of the input in the structure block input data such as the story elevation and dimensions of block and roof slopes. Similarly, the shear line wall and opening dimensions provide a summary for the locations of all the walls and openings in the project file. The table also reports the aspect ratio of the shear resisting segments in the project file. The key area in the structural data is the sheathing and framing materials table, which, combined, gives a summary of all the wall construction used in the structure. Both tables assign a wall group to each wall construction. A group is described by its exterior and interior surface, followed by the materials used for these surfaces. In the first table, the sheathing information and the fastener information are grouped together. The sheathing material, the plywood thickness and number of plies, or the OSB thickness and panel mark. The orientation of the sheathing, either horizontal or vertical, and the shear through thickness used for calculating deflection are all displayed. In the fastener section, the nail diameter, length, and penetration depth are shown as well as edge and intermediate nail spacing along the panels. You can also see if the wall has blocking and, if unblocked, the JUS factor may be less than 1.0. If information about gypsum underlay is entered when designing the wall material, it will be showcased in the GU column. The framing materials by wall group is viewed by scrolling down under the legend of the sheathing table. It indicates the stud framing material by wall group, listing the species, grade, width and depth of the studs, the stud spacing, and the specific gravity and modulus of elasticity of the studs. These two tables show some of the most important results, as they have most of the shear wall construction requirements that should be incorporated in a typical shear wall schedule. A multitude of sheathing combinations or wall group in the design results is not practical. Therefore, a good strategy is to limit the unknowns in the design in order to reduce the number of wall groups. It is also a good way of making sure that you chose the desired materials and framing. You can also create standard walls with your preferred framing details. If you leave unknowns when defining materials and framing details in shear walls, the software will automatically determine the most efficient combination of the shear wall construction requirement that would resist the loads applied to the structure. In fact, information about thickness of the sheathing, fastener's length, 
diameter, edge and interior spacing, as well as some framing details can be obtained in the final design when leaving them as unknowns. Toggling the design in group feature, available in the walls form view, permits the user to quickly design each group of wall, which has the same type, with the same details. For example, in a four-story structure with the same wall type on each level, when toggled, each level will change its details even if you only adjust wall A1 on level 1. If you disable this feature for all walls on level 1, you can then adjust them without changing details on other levels. This is particularly useful if you want to design walls on the first story to be stronger than walls on the rest of the structure, for example. As mentioned earlier, each type of wall which has the same details will be assigned as a group in the sheathing and framing materials details.